for those of you who are joining us, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, you're very welcome. We have started a series, Intense Prayer or Emergency Prayer. Intense Prayer or Emergency Prayer with Dr. Bolo. And we kicked off yesterday with such a powerful message. As I was reflecting on the message, one of the things that struck me was this idea that whilst in prison, Peter was able to sleep. He was able to sleep because he trusted that the Lord would move on his behalf and would do according to his will. And whatever God's will was, it would be what is good for Peter, because the Bible tells us that he has a plan for us and it's a plan to prosper us. As I reflected on that message, my prayer yesterday was, dear God, help me to trust you like Peter did, so that even in the midst of the storm, I am able to sleep, I am able to rest and wait upon you. What a power powerful message. And today we are back again. We are sitting at Jesus's feet. You are very welcome. As I said, if you're here for the first time in Kenya, we say Karibu Sana. I'd like to take this moment to introduce our speaker, Dr. Bolo. I mentioned that his bio is a mile long and every morning I would share a small insight as I introduce him. So I know I have a minute left before it's his time. So allow me to say that Dr. Bolo has a a, a, a mission or, or as a passion for advancing the mission of the church. While working on his master's degree, Pastor Bolo served as a tutor and also worked as a teacher for the Department of New Testament for the Greater New York Conference Bible Institute. In 2005, while still a student, Pastor Bolo led a, led a clothing and school books drive that resulted in transporting a 40-foot container to West Africa, where they distributed these donations to many communities and schools. He has participated in medical missionary efforts in Africa and the Caribbean and was a youth pastor in West Africa, where he led services for over 2,000 military personnel. Pastor Bolo's passion for people has led him to be a part of many missionary works, including trips to Africa, South America, Spain, Canada, and the Caribbean. I think it is very fitting that he is leading us this morning as we continue, as we go into the theme of mission today. Uh, Pastor, I'm handing over to you. Thank you so very much. I'm not pastor, as you can hear my voice. Um, this is Izimbinga. And uh, thank you, my sister Mucha, for the introduction that you've just given about the pastor. Um, the pastor is battling to lock in. I've just been speaking to him right now. And uh, yes, he has just come in in a moment. He's just come in. Uh, he's been having challenges with the uh, uh, coming through, but uh, maybe a minute, even not a minute, less than a minute, I can see he's just logged in with a video and he just has to log in with an audio. Uh, friends, we so that you can take over. Thank you so very kindly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I hope you all can see me. Can you all see me well? Yes, yes, my good doctor, we can see you. Thank you so kindly. We want to bless God today for his grace and his mercy. I'm having <laughs> technical problems here for some reason, but God is truly amazing. And he will do what he promised he will do. Amen. Um, so we want to thank God. At this time, I want to, I want to pray for you quickly, read our scripture and go straight into our word today. Again, I want to welcome those that are watching from wherever you're watching from today. We want to say you are welcome. Um, because of time, I'm not going to sing my song. I'll do that for you tomorrow. Be in a better position. I've been traveling the entire day. So I want to thank God. I just got home not too long ago. We want to bless God. Um, turn with me into, in your Bible to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. That's where we're going to spend our time today. Matthew chapter 14. When you get there with a the preacher, type in amen. Like I say, I love to hear some responses. So. Um, our host, I know if you can unmute one or two persons to just help the preacher out along the way, that will be great um, as we Amen. Push, Amen. as we proceed with the word. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 14. When you get to Matthew chapter 14, Amen with the preacher. The Bible says this. The Bible says, um, 
and I'm going to read the Bible says in verse in, in verse in verse 16 but Jesus said unto them they need not depart give them to eat and they said unto him we have we have here but five loaves and two fishes he said bring them here to me and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five five loaves and the two fishes and looked up to heaven he blessed and he break and gave the loaves to his disciples. And the disciples told the multitude, verse 20, and they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. Verse 21, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitude away. Verse 23, and when he has sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Verse 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on to them walking on the sea. Verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Verse 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Today, our team, intense prayer or emergency prayer. Pray with me, Father. Bless us now as we go through your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Intense prayer. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 is one of the most troubling chapters in the Bible. As a pastor, as a Christian, is one of the most troubling passages in scripture, in the entire Bible. One of the most troubling things when it comes to Jesus and his followers. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 14 that the cousin, the first cousin of Jesus is in prison. He sends a word to Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus did not show up. And before you knew it, this cousin of his is beheaded. Now, now I want to pause and say this. Beside being the cousin, he is Jesus. And you know, we as Christians, we believe whenever we call the name of Jesus, he is to show up. Whenever we make a request to him, he should come to our rescue. Whenever we ask what we want, we believe that he should give it. Amen. But may I suggest to us that there are times when we pray, we don't get the answer the way we expect it to come. In this case, John the Baptist sent a word to Jesus. Are you the Messiah or should we look for another? Because he's been in prison and Jesus would not show up. And to that, Jesus does not answer. But the pastor said that John the Baptist is beheaded. Think about it. You're in the church. Are you among believers? And you get sick. You're in the hospital. And many churches, I've pastored for a long time. And what I've experienced is that the elder can visit. 
the, the, the women's ministry leader can visit, uh, um, uh, uh, and the deaconess can visit. But if the pastor does not show up, they still believe that nobody has visited them. Are you there with me? Maybe it's just in America. And John the Baptist wanted Jesus to come, and Jesus did not come. And, 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 and I have my own theory as to why Jesus doesn't show up, but, but this is one of the saddest passages in Scripture. I believe if Jesus had shown up to the prison door of John the Baptist, he would have had to release him. Are you there with me? I read that he came to set the captain free. And, and I believe if Jesus had shown up to the prison, John the Baptist would have had to have been released. But in God's divine plan, Jesus does not show up. And John the Baptist is beheaded. And the Bible says straightway, Jesus headed for the mountain. In other words, it says Jesus wanted to be alone. This death must have gotten to Jesus. Why couldn't I go to my cousin? Why couldn't I release him? But in the divine orchestration, in God's framework, sometimes answer does not come the way we expect them to come. How much is somebody? This is what the Bible says. The Bible says as Jesus head for the mountain, the multitude follow him. You see, if you're Jesus, you can go somewhere by yourself. The multitude follow him. And Jesus has no choice but to teach them. And when Jesus is done teaching them, Jesus said to the disciples, let's feed them. The disciples said, Lord, we don't have enough. Jesus says, okay, whatever you have, bring it here. They brought two fishes and, and five loaves. And the Bible says Jesus blessed it and broke it and handed it to the disciples. And they fed over 5,000 men, excluding the women and children. So we're talking about maybe 25,000 people or more. That's how powerful Jesus is. But when this was done, the Bible says that Jesus said to the disciples, get into the ship and go over to the other side Why I usher the people. Now, this is amazing to me. This is amazing to me. I want you to understand this now. This is amazing to me because Jesus wanted to be alone. He made an excuse to be alone. The pastor don't usher the people out in church. That's why we have deacons and deaconesses and usher. That's not the pastor's job. Have mercy on me. But, but, but in this case, Jesus said, I want to be alone, so go. I will usher the people. The Bible says when the disciples left, Jesus usher the people. Jesus went to the top of the mountain to communicate with his father. Maybe in their conversation, he began to say, why did I go to release my cousin? Who knows? But why this is going on, why Jesus is there with the father, while they're having their communication, the Bible says that on the other side, the disciples are caught up in a storm on the sea. Are you there with the preacher tonight? They are caught up in a storm on the sea. How come? How come I'm doing the bidding of God? How come I'm doing the commands of God? How come I'm following all that God says, and yet I'm caught up in the storm? You know, sometimes you ask the question, why does bad things happen to good people? How come he was doing right, she was doing right, and all of a sudden tragedy strikes? How come? Doing the biddings of God, have mercy somebody. How come? Friends of mine, I want to say this to you. That does not matter where you find yourself. Even now, as I speak to you this morning, it does not matter where you find yourself. I say to you, hang on, because Jesus is on his way to your location. Are you there with me? Hang on, because Jesus is on his way. He will soon be there. He's an in-time God. Are you there with me? 
Amen. And look at what happened. The Bible says Jesus does not show up to the disciples at the first wash. The first wash from 6 to 9 p.m. As soon as they enter the boat, as soon as they're halfway in the sea, from 6 to 9 p.m., the, the wind is tossing, the, the, the billows are rolling, and, and, and the waves mm. are getting higher, and Jesus does not show up. And they pray, they pray at the first watch. He does not show up. The Bible even recalls that the second watch from 9 to 12 a.m., Jesus does not show up. This is midnight. Hey. Jesus does not show up. Sometimes you pray. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we talk to God, and it seems like he's an absentee God. It seems that he doesn't show up. It seems like he's not concerned about our situation. Sometimes we ask, it seems that God has forsaken or abandoned us. Are you there with a the preacher tonight, this Amen. morning? Are you there with a the preacher? Jesus does not show up at the second watch. In fact, you think he will show up at the third watch. That's from 12 to 3 a.m. Now they're having a terrible night. Come on, talk to me, church. They're up all night talking to God. Some of some mother can sleep because her child has gotten hooked on drug. Some mother can sleep because her daughter went out and did not come back. Some father can sleep because there was crisis in his marriage. Somebody is tossing and turning and talking to God at the turn wash from 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 from, from three from 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 twelve to three a.m. And yet Jesus does not show up. Yes, sir. Come on now. What do you do? Mm. When Jesus doesn't show up, when you call him. But the Bible mm. says at the folk wash, early in the morning, you know, I love the song that say, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus early in the morning. Why it is still dark just before the dawn, the break of dawn. I wish I were listening to the preacher this morning. Early in the morning, I, I read somewhere that weeping might endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Are you there with me? I read that battles are won early in the morning. I read that burdens are lifted at Calvary, and Jesus shows up early. In the morning, are you there with a the preacher tonight? This Amen. morning, Amen. early in the morning, Jesus doesn't now at the fourth wash, they see a figure walking amidst the storm. Mm. They see something walking amidst, and then, then, then think about it. Hope is headed their way, but they're afraid. This is 4 a.m. in the morning. Hope seems to bring fear to them. Sometimes the very thing that God wants to use to deliver us becomes fearful in our sight because we've been in the storm too long and we are afraid of every sight we see. Are you listening to the preacher? Amen. So the Bible says this. The Bible says something amazing. The Bible says while they are watching, while they are looking, discussing among themselves, they are saying, but there is no land around. We are in the middle of the sea. The storm is raging. The lightning is flashing. The thunder is roaring. We can see our way out. They look and see someone walking in white on the sea. They declare to themselves, because they are mostly fishermen, they said to themselves, you know, fishermen, they are very superstitious. You mm. know, it's like back when we believe in all kinds of things. You know, you know what I'm talking about. They said, that's the spirit coming. The very one that was bringing hope appeared to be fearful to them. The very thing that's supposed to deliver them, the same one that God wants to use to be our breakthrough, sometimes we're afraid when we see it. On the job, God's going to relieve you them praying asking for help, the help comes. You see the person as a threat to you. Mm. The very one that God has sent your way to be a helper, 
because you've been bitten once. You're, you're afraid now that this time you're going to be eaten up. And, and sometimes we're afraid. So even when God sends help, we don't see it. Mm. Are you listening to the preacher? Amen. And as Jesus is approaching them, uh, and Jesus knowing their thought, Jesus said to them, uh, uh, be not verse 27 of, of Matthew 14. Jesus said straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know where you are. You are at in your Christian journey, but I want to tell you this morning, as you're stepping out of your beds, as you're getting, as you're getting ready to walk out, be of good cheer. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, It is I. Be not afraid. It is I. You see, when you serve God, you don't need to be afraid. Thousand might fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, they will not Amen. come near to near thee. You see, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that fly at noonday, or the pestilence Amen. that works at noonday. The Bible says, because God will give his angels charge over you. And that's why you can walk and our robbers can rob you, but can still take nothing from you. You can travel in places that the thing you will not make it. You can drink poison and yet God delivers you. You can get sick and still walk from the hospital bed. You can get in an accident in order to make it and you're still standing because Jesus is saying, be of good cheer. If you trust me, believe that I'm still able to save. I Amen. wish I had a witness in the house this morning. Hmm. Be of good cheer. Hallelujah. And when they heard it, they recognized. It's good to recognize the voice of God. I wish you were listening to me this morning. It's yep. good to recognize the voice of God. Peter said, oh, 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 he said to them, it is Jesus. Mm. That voice sounds like the master, the one that turned water into wine. That voice sounds like the master, the one that showed up to the Hebrew voice. That voice sounds like the master, the one that said, peace be still. Mm. That voice sounds like Jesus. Then Peter did something that no man has ever done. Mm. He said to him, Lord, if it is you. Yes, sir. Come on now. I wish you're listening to the preacher. You know, sometimes we want proof. If you ask God for proof, he will give you proof. I wish you're listening to the preacher this morning. If you want evidence, God will show you evidence. He said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come unto you. Mm. Jesus said, okay, Peter, come on to me. All right, though. Now, now, now you got to understand, nobody has ever walked on water. In fact, the, the physicists, Isaac Newton and other physicists came up with the law, Bohr's law of gravitational pull. They said that no object that is heavy because there is a gravitational pull that pulls things down. Nothing can stand on water or float. It will go down. Are you everything? They said there is a pull that holds everything. And a man cannot walk on water. Mm. So when Peter asked God, if it's you, bid me come, because Peter saw Jesus walking on water. He said, Lord, if it's you, let me come. Jesus said, come. And Peter kept his eyes on Jesus. Mm. And it's Peter good. believed his words. I wish you were listening to me. You see, the process is keeping our eyes on Jesus amidst the storm and, 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 and stepping into his words. That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You see, that word has I hid it in my heart that I may not sin against thee. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus and step on his words in faith, the impossible becomes possible. Are you listening to the preacher? But look at what else happened. When God told Peter to come, the elements on the Peter's feet, the, the miraculous element, the water, to come the property of solid. Are you there with me? 
You see, it was yes, God yes. that created everything. Jesus, the Bible says nothing had been made that was made without him. He was in the beginning. He is the beginning. Before there was a beginning, and now he said to Peter, I know your end from the beginning. Peter, you want to step down? Step down. And Peter stepped down. He heard the water, heard the voice of Jesus, and the water automatically aligned and took the property of Sally. Are you that say? And Jesus, Listen Peter, began to walk to Jesus. I wish I had a witness in the house this morning. Hallelujah. You that what seems to be impossible when you make an emergency request to God. Hey. He makes it happen. I wish I had a witness in the house this morning. They might say no, but faith is the victory that overcomes the world. The doctor may walk in the room and shake his head, but there is still a bone in Gilead that heals the soul. They might put him in prison, but ask Mandela, God is still able to deliver if you trust him. Are you there with me? Mm. When you move out in bold faith, God moves ahead of you. That's what I tell people. You can be afraid. Your miracle is on its way. Your blessing is on its way. And then you're afraid because you did not get it yesterday. My God is still in control. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. I got to come home now. I got to come home now. All right. While Peter is walking to Jesus, his eyes on him, looking on the master in his face, his mind sets on his word. Yeah. And while Peter is walking and Peter is making his way to Jesus, while Peter is making his way to Jesus, the Bible says the wind began, began boisterous. The storm. You know, it's like you've been doing things all your life and all of a sudden you got people saying, well, you can't do it anymore. You know, you, you passed that stage. It's, it's not possible again. You know, uh, because you, you, you lost a job, they said, well, you know, there's no way you're going to take care of your children. Or you become a single parent. There is no way you're going to make people begin to whisper negative things in your ear. And the devil would do that. Peter began to hear these negative words and, and see those things. And the wind, the Bible says the wind became contrary. If I had time, I would have told you, but my time is up. I want you to understand as the wind became contrary, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and began to look at the storm, began to look at the lightning and listen to the thundering. And Peter began to look at the angry wave that was closer to him. And just in that time, <laughs> he fell the water. Coming down to his knee, Peter knew he was going under. We should listen to me. But yeah. I love what Peter did. Peter did not wait for the crisis to intensify. When he realized that he was sinking, Peter said something amazing. Peter, yeah. Peter did yeah. what I call an emergency prayer. I wish I listened yeah. to the preacher. Yeah. Peter did what I call an intense prayer. I told you intense prayer has nothing to do with the length or the breath. Intense prayer has to do with your sincerity, my sincerity with God. Peter knew at that moment he never had time to say, Oh, thou who rules the land and the sea. He never had time to say, Oh, thou who created the heavens and the earth. He never had time to say, Oh, great is your faithfulness. But all he had time to say was, Lord, save me. That's an intense prayer. And when that prayer is made, I want you to understand that the master of the land and the sea. The master of the ocean was stretched out to your rescue. There Jesus reached his hand, and Jesus stretched his hand, and God beat it up of the feet. I wish you were listening to me. And the Bible says straightway, they found themselves in the boat. I wish you were listening to me. Master, I stress my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where would I go? This morning, your children are saying, God, we stretch our Wait. hand to thee with our doctor. We've fallen along the way. But if you withdraw yourself from them, where will they go? And God, I wanted to show up 
And when you make such a prayer, oh, mm, Jesus mm. shows up. <laughs> Friends, as I close, mm. I could preach this message out of way. I could tell you still focus. Mm. Mm. But I just want to focus today on the intensity of the prayer. Is that prayer when the car is about to crash? You say, Lord, the intensity of the prayer shows the connection of the heart. It's not how fancy we say or what we say, it's not how eloquent it sounds. Is how sincere the request is to God. Mm. Do we believe God enough to say that God is able? Do we believe God enough to trust him and take him at his word? Do we believe God enough to say it is so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word? Kutigi mi ya mwa kozi kwa guta muta besa kuku bawili no leka ni na rata mayoni Yesu. Yeshu ni mwamini ni mi wana ta beti Yeshu Yeshu yota mani ada zika kweli. Bow your heads with me wherever you are. Bow your heads with me wherever you are. Yeshu firia kwa sababu. Father, we want to thank you. Amen. I'm so glad that I've learned to trust you. Mm. I'm so glad that I've learned. I'm so glad that your children have learned to trust you. Just to thank you of your words. Yes, sir. Father, this morning, the storm is raging all around the world, but not the storm, political storm, a, 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 a social injustice storm, and God class system storm. But I know a God that will show up at the fourth watch. And he said this morning, I'm just looking for a daughter that can trust in me, I'm looking for a son, I'm looking for a boy that can trust in me that the bills will be paid, that teachers will be provided. I'm looking for a child that can trust in me that their will will be made perfect and their education will be met. I'm looking for somebody to take me at, their, at my words. Yeah. And Father, this morning, we want to thank you because you are able, like you did for Peter, we want to speak two words. Lord, save us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I say in Jesus' name, amen. Wherever you are, put your hands together. For amen. The Lord. amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise wherever you are. Amen. Wherever you are. Amen. 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 What's